All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, the process has started. Uh, it actually started a, a damn near two weeks ago uh, for the scale that I'm at anyway. Um, I want you to understand something here. I say this respectfully. Uh, I want you to try and respect a little bit that I actually will show you, for the most part, my facilities. Uh, my facilities continue to need oncoming help and rebuilding. Trust me, I'm, I'm getting there. But uh, I'm working. I work with what I have. I don't have grandpa or dad's magical treasure chest of cash. And uh, I'm going to stop there. Um, that's all I have to say. Okay, we're going to look at two groups of animals here on this video. <clears throat> They've been in here for a while. Uh, tomorrow morning is pen cleaning day. I, I know it's a little rough in here. They'll be fine. These are both abandoned heifers that were hutch raised and, of course, put in here after the hutch. Uh, they're going to stay in here all winter with more to come. Okay. I saw it fitting today and, um, to go after my kept back bulls. Now, I opted to keep four of them. That's 3030 Marlin right there. Of course, his daddy is, uh, his AI daddy, Sire, is iconic. He stays on this farm. I couldn't tell you about the rest of them because I don't have my paperwork on me. I know that I've got three full black Angus, and then I have a 75% uh, <coughs> uh, Hereford, 25 black Angus, that uh, beautiful Hereford looking. Um, and he uh, he's a little crafty. He got away from me this morning. Uh, being it was Sunday, I, I, I just I let him go. Um, I'll, I'll worry about him tomorrow or Tuesday. <coughs> so here's the plan of attack for this winter. Uh, making a couple little changes uh, ish. All right, first things first, I only kept back four bowls this year. I usually keep eight. Um, because I'm not very smart, I always sell all my bowls. So, of course, I decided to only keep half this year. I still don't understand where I was going with that. Where I was going with that decision was more pen space for TLC winter calves. Um, for, you know, a little, a little more of a spring paycheck, for crying out loud. That was my reason for it. I, right now, I wish I would have done things differently and kept back my standard eight. But uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Um, that's it. So, it kind of went pretty smooth. I hate to even say it. You know, they've got real no reason right now to be all cantankerous and everything. And none of these have the devil's blood in them. But, uh, things went pretty good. That fourth one just kind of, he weaseled his way out of it. And, uh. What are you going to do? I got a lot of hopes in this boy right here. Um, now, of course, remember, this was this spring's calf. And, uh, yeah, he's a good boy. You're a good boy. You're okay. You're okay. He's a little bit on the lighter side than the other two. And actually, the other three. You haven't seen the third one yet. The other one. But... Uh, We've uh, we've got all we've got all winter to fix that with his growth, grain rations, good alfalfa. We'll see what we can do. Uh, real quick, speaking of grain rations, it's full on grain now, twice a day, morning and evening. Uh, this is my grain ration. It can be called you can call this a poor man's grain ration because I guess that's what it is, and I'm, it works for me. I'm not milking cows here, folks. This last ration that I just had delivered last week, it's a 6,000-pound delivery. It's 3,000 pounds of rolled corn, 2,900 pounds of rolled oats, with 100 pounds of a 
cow calf mineral. Um, yeah, poor man's ration. Can't afford the expensive one. Remember, I'm not milking cows here. That grain ration is important to me. Um, the, the difference that it does is, I'm speaking the obvious no. Oh, that's gonna be a beer on the next video. I can assure you that. Okay. Now we're gonna take a look at daddy's new pair of boots coming. I hope. This feeder market is still extremely strong. Extremely strong. If you had to do some comparing to last year, the year before, the year before that. <coughs> which is barely even fair to compare. She has taken a pretty good dive down though. Uh... They're getting their straw, maybe even, you know what? Tomorrow was gonna be all on bedding day, but I think I better put some straw in here tonight. So, this is a collection of steers. There is no science behind the ones that you're about to see and why they're here. It's just, it's what went through the chute and was convenient for me at the time. Yes, that's my answer. They get their grain twice a day. Uh, no science behind it, just a five gallon pail. They haven't gotten their grain yet tonight. They will as soon as this video is done. Right, you meat wagon. Got a little smaller one in here. Anyway, these, including the other ones that we're about to look at, are shipping, I'm shipping them to the shipper Wednesday of this, week. They are going to land down at the Northern Michigan Livestock uh, feeder sale in Gaylord, Michigan um, for Friday, November 10th. Uh, pretty stinking happy with my calf crop this year in general. And then of course come, let's just say my, my, my wean off calves for the year. I'm all over the place here. Pretty happy I like what I'm seeing. Um, of course, everything's been fully vaccinated to go through the, uh, you know, for the preconditioned, preconditioned sale. That's where you should normally get your top dollar. Of course, you have to provide proof of your purchases. Um, every one of these have been vaccinated with a, a Bovishield Gold One Shot. Uh, which basically, let, let's just say, covers everything, basically. And then uh, a very expensive uh, Epronix uh, Poron dewormer. And that's all that they get. Of course, it'll be a two-week, uh, 15 days uh, before sale of vaccination. And that's what they're looking for. So I brought in some big squares I'm supplementing some feed in there. I, I, as you can see, I got to throw some in tonight instead of trying to get another round bale in there, which can be a disaster. Remember, I I play lone soldier here uh, quite quite often. It's not like I have an employee or two running around here, folks. You got to get a little crafty with some of the things that you do. You're okay. And these are going as well. And uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty happy. Um, I, I hope these should make these, these will make someone happy. Um, yeah, a lot of good health. Of course, there's a couple scrawny ones that are leaving. Um, normally on a normal year, that red mix that, that would never leave. This year he is though. Uh, I'd probably never ship this one as well. I'd want to keep him back for a winter, winter TLC. This year they're going. 
somebody else can put a TLC program on them and they'll be they'll be just fine. Yeah, they're waiting for their grain ration as well. I got to tell you something here. Uh, <coughs> I tried something this year for wean off. <coughs> uh, I got to get back in there in a second anyway. Uh, the easiest wean off I've ever seen. Uh, now, of course, it was 48 hours of hell. And we're talking about the calves and the balling and all the stress and all the weight loss and everything else. So I kind of mirrored a program that my very good buddy and local cattleman, uh, Rick, Rick Ray, uh, most of you are a fan of the channel, you know his name comes up often. And we even did a, we did a video at his place years ago. I ended up acquiring some heifers from him. Great cattleman. Uh... The last two years, I've been helping him off with his, uh, helping him out. Um, <laughs> shit. Uh, with his vaccination program. Anyway, quit all that rowdiness. Um, he, for a couple few days or better, feeds his weaned off calves, uh, country calf. Now, country calf is up by us. It's something that Ray's Feed Mill kind of puts together, so to speak. Country calf is basically, and I've talked about this before, it's like a, a Perina Startina, but it's not, not as rich in that molasses. It's more dry than anything. Um, and I'm here to tell you, I'm going to follow suit with that from here on out. Because uh, instead of a three, maybe four-day hellish affair, Folks, I kid you not, it was 48 hours and that hellish wean off process was over. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean these calves weren't hurting still, you know, for mama. But uh, it was just, uh, you're a big boy. You're a stout son of a bitch right there. Um, went very well. Very, very well. <coughs> That's it. Like I said, they're going to end up down in Gaylord, Northern Michigan Livestock Sale for the November 10th, Friday, November 10th. Uh, one of their three or four special feeder sales a year. And uh, see what happens. See what happens. Really haven't done a whole lot of talking here, so I'll go ahead and show you that uh, hardwood skyline or whatever the hell you want to call it. Basically, all our leaves are gone. Basically. And uh, yeah, things have changed. It was no more than five days ago we had a complete whiteout. Now, whiteout only lasted for about three minutes. But, uh,. In that three minutes, I had visions of firewood that needed to be hauled in and everything else, winterized, finished winterizing the barn. Um, but yeah, it's getting to be that time of year. We've had some surprisingly cold temperatures, uh, 20, 21, 22 degrees, almost on a very daily morning basis. Today was a little bit mild. A guy hardly needs this BS on. But that's it, folks. I'm going to finish off chores. Uh, I got a dilly dally with a couple of little things. I'm going to grab some brewskis and we're going to make another video right after this. And uh, I got a lot to talk about. Talk to you sooner or later.